What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Training with Bill. So as I said, I'm gonna update you guys with regards to my surgery that's gonna to happen tomorrow. Um, I received a phone call today from the hospital just basically giving me an update uh, and confirming some information for tomorrow. So I have to be there at six o'clock in the morning tomorrow. Um, I have to be fasting from midnight tonight. Um, so no food, no water. And the person said, or the nurse said that if I'm thirsty, I can have some sips of water up until 4 a.m. I think that's something to do with the anaesthetic um, to make sure that it has full effect I'm assuming so I won't be having any water or any food from midnight um, and also just to bring a night bag so with regards to the surgery pretty much over the past year and a half I've had pain in my shoulder the best way to describe my pain in the shoulder is instability and if you want to know exactly what it feels like if you take your finger and just pull it away from your knuckle so just separate that joint right there as soon as you pull it apart and you try and move your um, wrist around or you try and move that finger around, that feeling is exactly the feeling that I have in my shoulder. So it's really clunky, instability, it's weak, um, and at the same time, because it's my arm and it hangs down by your side, it feels like gravity is kind of just pulling you on your arm the whole time. So after a few hours of doing something repetitive or using your left arm, um, it tends to feel all numb and it feels like I've been sleeping on my arm so it's not the greatest feeling in the world but I've been able to handle it over the past year and a half and finally I'm going to get it sorted so I'm a bit excited and a little bit nervous at the same time I'm excited because I'm finally going to get my shoulders uh, sorted which is a very very big thing for me um, I'm also excited it's a bit stupid but I've never been to hospital before so I'm just a little bit of excited to go into the hospital and see what that experience is like even though it's probably a good thing that I've never been to hospital. In terms of nervous, I'm nervous for a lot of reasons. Uh, number one, somebody has to put me under and I have to rely on that person to wake me back up. So that's pretty nerve wracking in itself. Number two, once you're under, you don't exactly know what they're doing to you. So that's a pretty strange idea if you think about it, that you're asleep and you're a rag doll and people are gonna be moving you around and, and doing whatever it is that they have to do, especially a person with probably a knife and some tools and they're gonna be digging them into your body. So yeah, it wasn't, uh, it's not the best um, thing to be thinking about beforehand. And the third reason, which is probably the most important, I uh, don't recommend anybody doing this. If you are out there and you're about to have surgery on anything or any kind of surgery like what I'm about to have, um, what I did was I started looking up the process of what's involved in the surgery online. And thank you, YouTube. I found a video of a surgeon actually performing the surgery. And believe me, I can only watch about five seconds of it and I had to turn it off because it looked like the guy was a voodoo doll. He was asleep, they had his arm uh, in some sort of machine that was pulling it um, away from, from, from himself. And then there was a doctor just sitting there with like, looked like a long skewer or something. If you've ever seen what liposuction surgery or liposuction in general looks like, it looked like that. It's not something nice. If I can find a video, I'll put it up so that you guys can see exactly what it is that um, will be involved and what it is that I've seen. Um, so if anybody's going for surgery, I don't recommend watching this part of the video um, but yeah so I made that mistake and unfortunately for me I have to just um, deal with that so tomorrow guys is my surgery and I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow after the surgery all right guys so I just got back from my surgery um, so what I had was a label tear in the left shoulder um, and a dislocation so it was an anterior tear um, and I'll start from the beginning so six o'clock was my admission to the hospital um, and I didn't get in till 7.30 into the actual theater. So at 7.30, I was the first patient in there and I didn't get out of the actual hospital till about four o'clock. So <coughs> I'd hate to be the last person that was in there. So as you can tell, still got all padding all around. I've got my sling in and I can't even feel my fingers still to an hour. I can't even move them at all, um, which is probably a good thing. So my whole arm is completely numb. So let's see where to start. Um, first things first, as soon as I got in there, they made me fill out the paperwork like a million times over. Is this your name? Do you have any allergies? So it was really good to see that they were pretty thorough with um, all the information that they needed beforehand. Um, and then I got straight into my gown. So that was probably a bit strange, to be honest. I've seen a few gowns on movies, but I've never put one on. And it didn't look right to have the opening at the back. So 
I swapped it around and had it on the front and I tied it off and I found out the hard way that you can't do it that way. It's supposed to go to the back so anybody that's having surgery, um, the gown the opening goes to the back and it stays undone. So they give you another coat or something to put over the top. Note to self, goes on this way, the splits on the back. So all in all, it was a pretty um, exciting experience to be honest. Um, so as soon as I had done that, I went straight from there. I had somebody wheel me around on the bed, which was pretty fun. It looks exactly like the movies when people get um, taken into the ER and all you see is the lights and the ceiling you basically see from the view of the patient. Um, it was exactly like that, but the only difference was I had the biggest smile on my face because um, I was pretty excited. They're just wheeling me around, taking me down the um, elevators until I got to the room where the um, anaesthetist was to meet me. So as soon as I went through that, those doors, it was um, plastic flap doors. If you imagine like a storeroom or something at Home Depot or Bunnings or just pretty much any kind of hardware store, they've got those plastic flap doors or even a meat place. It looked like, like an abattoir. Um, and that was a bit freaky to be honest because it did get a bit colder as I went in there. And then I'm thinking, here we go. Here's the guy that's gonna come put me to sleep so that people can butcher me and start poking me with things and um, so yeah but every, it was a pretty fun experience everybody was very nice and helpful um, it was interesting because they were extremely relaxed and almost happy to be there so I guess when you do something day in day out you lose that initial effect or that um, it kind of just wears off so they just go in there it's just another day at work for them for me on the other hand i was a bit paranoid but that was they seemed pretty um comfortable and, and confident in what they were doing so um what they did was they put the uh cannula so that goes straight into your arm he put some fluid in there so i'm not too familiar with the uh, terminology or what exactly they did put in so first he put that one in and then they gave me the gas so they put the gas on i think i was breathing just regular oxygen at the beginning and i started asking him what's the longest somebody's ever um been able to stay awake before they fall asleep when they take the um uh go under um anesthesia or um whatever it is the stuff that anethius gives you the, the knockout stuff so the gas um and he said usually that People that last very long time before they actually get knocked out are the ones that take drugs. So people that uh, smoke pot um, or marijuana um, or people that take drugs. Apparently it affects with the, um, the receptors in the brain um, and that will affect the actual stuff that they use um, to put you to sleep. So um, I had no problems with that. I don't take anything. So um, I told him I'm going to set a new challenge for you um, and I'm going to be the longest person to stay awake. And then they wheeled me into the actual theater room um, where they started putting stickers on my head to measure uh, my sleep while I'm asleep to make sure that I stay a um, certain amount of depth into my sleep, I'm assuming, so that I don't wake up halfway through. Note to everybody out there, make sure you go to the toilet before you actually go in. I didn't need to go in and then by the time they wheeled me in and got me through into the theater and everything, I started needing to wanting like wanting to go to the toilet, but I thought I'll just hold it. It should be okay. It was a bit of a stupid idea because once you go under, I'm not going to wake up to go to the toilet, especially if I'm not waking up while they're stabbing me. I'm definitely not going to get up to go to the toilet. So one of the first things I did when I um, came to was I checked if I had weed myself, but I didn't. So um, thumbs up to that one. So anyway guys, as soon as I went inside, they put me in, um, like I said, they put those stickers on my head to measure that stuff. They had some compression socks on my legs to prevent any kind of clotting. Um, and they had these little pump things as well that they were gonna put on my legs. Um, and I, I think they just put, it's exactly like a blood pressure machine. So they just wanna make sure that they put that tension on your legs to prevent the clots. Um, so yeah, once I went in there, they told me, okay, go, okay, just jump over to the next bed. And so they put two beds side by side. I had to crawl over to the other side. I thought I was still 100% awake at that point. They had me stretch my right arm out. Um, so that's not the damaged arm, obviously. So I stretched my right arm out. I think they strapped it down or did something to it. Um, and the bed was super comfy. All I remember saying was this bed is awesome. I think at that point the um, drugs had started to kick in and I was asking them about where they get their pillows from and where they get their beds from. So after that, absolutely nothing 
nothing, no memory of any of it um, up until I actually woke up. So I've got some footage, I'll start throwing them through as I go um, to show you guys pretty much anything that I could take a, a photo of or a video of so that you guys know what to expect. Don't remember anything after that, eh? it's just... So they're going to bring me a crab salad. I think they think I'm a rabbit. As soon as I woke up, I was out of it. I had no idea. I was like, took me a while to open up both eyes at the same time. And I think I was just moving everything in slow motion. Um, and it was pretty exciting to be honest. So that was probably the worst part of the whole surgery was the waking up part because I couldn't control myself. So um, I wasn't fully awake. I wasn't asleep. It's like those vague moments that you can kind of remember like parts of a dream. That's exactly what it felt like. So once that had happened, they wheeled me off into my uh, recovery room and I could not feel my hand. So it was, it's pretty freaky. If you imagine when you sleep on your hand um, and your arm goes completely numb, it felt like that, but it felt like I, um, I wasn't getting off my arm, if that makes, makes sense. So usually when you sleep on your arm and it goes all numb, um, you tend to get up and you can feel your arm and squeeze it. And you, once you move it a bit, um, the blood starts rushing through there and the tingles start coming through. None of that. Um, it's now probably about 6, 6.30 in the afternoon, so it's been a good, what, what's that, uh, 10 hours since, um, no more, probably al almost, uh, been just over 10 hours, so just over 10 hours that I've had the um, drugs in my system, so once they put me under with the um, gas, that's when they put a block in, so the block was the one that actually numbs um, all the nerves, I'm assuming, or knocked blocks the receptors so just basically numbs your arm that one goes straight into your neck so I didn't get to see that one at the moment it's still all numb as you can see right around the bandages that's where all the numbness is so over here is not numb at all and then as I come over to the bandages it's just completely numb um, so I've got some footage I'm sitting there playing with my hands um, I, that's probably the scary part because you don't feel what damage you have um, on your body and you don't really know what kind of pain you're in because they've blocked all the uh, nerves or the receptors in your body So you don't really feel the pain and that's a bit of a problem because I'm trying to get up and I want to use my arm and I'm pushing off my shoulder and that's probably going to be the hardest part just to keep in mind that I don't um, Put any pressure on my shoulder. I'll show you guys what the sling looks like. It's a pretty awesome sling to be honest So that is the sling. I love this looks like it's actually a pretty trendy sling you can see there that it's got a pad in the middle. I'll show you guys from the back. So it's got a little pad somewhere over here, and that separates the um, the sling or my shoulder from my body, so it keeps that perfect distance away. And the purpose of that is just to keep the tension off the shoulder. So as I start moving around now, I can actually move my fingers. I'll show you guys how much. This is only in the last half an hour. I've been able to. You can see there, got some slight movement in my fingers, but still no feeling whatsoever so now that I've finally had my surgery complete guys um, I'm looking forward to the recovery hopefully it's not going to be too painful tonight I'll upload a video um, as part of this video if it does get painful and I'll try and describe how much pain I'm in at the moment I've got no pain um, I'd probably say five to ten percent pain which is nothing um, it's more discomfort and that's because it's all completely numb um, so like I said guys, initially I made a mistake and I watched about five seconds of a video um, of somebody having the surgery, so it's a arthroscopy or arth yeah, arthroscopy, like I said I'm not good with these words. Um, so it was that that I had and I watched a short clip on YouTube which I'm going to put in this video um, so that you guys know exactly what's involved. Now when I watched this video, I was thinking man, I cannot believe people do this. There was no... Uh, nice way to do it there's no compassion there's no um, ease of using those tools and driving things and putting a knife to your body I mean that <laughs> I don't know guys it, it, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys you guys can watch the video but just a quick note if anybody out there is going to have this surgery 
do not watch this video that's coming up right now because it'll scare the crap out of you. So like I said, if you guys are up for it, you've got the stomach for it, check it out. I'm going to put it just a quick clip of it now and then I'll put the link in the description so if anybody else is interested in what they actually do, it's pretty amazing what they do. Um, so I've got three holes or three incisions, one at the front, one on the side and one at the back. So once this is all taken off, I'll show you guys what it actually looks like and I've also got some photos of some of the repairs and stitching and things like that that they have actually done inside because they had to repair the tear in the labrum so I'll shoot some of those videos up or those photos up so that you guys can see probably around right now and then after this I'll get straight into the video so like I said if you've got a weak stomach do not watch if you're about to have the surgery do not watch and if you're a sick-minded person or you're very interested in what was actually going on, check this video out. We're going to identify our portal placement. the uh, biceps tendon here and that's an intra and extra articular structure the biceps attaches to the superior labrum here so something else that I found interesting with my injury was that initially the only thing the MRI picked up was just a partial labral tear so that's what we had thought initially was causing all my pain um, however if you guys remember earlier on in the video I also said that it felt like my shoulder was, um, had a bit of separation in there um, and that's what I thought caused the clunkiness so it just felt like that my shoulder was pulling away pulling away from the socket and that's what I tried to explain to everybody however the only thing that was picked up was the um, labral tear today um, interestingly enough when the surgeon went in with the camera and everything else they actually found out that my shoulder was not only um, a labral tear present but also a dislocation so that's something that's very very interesting I didn't expect that whatsoever I always assumed that if you have a rotator cuff um, injury or a labral tear or in particular a dislocation that you're not able to move your arm up and down and left and right and whatever but with my case I was able to move it almost completely up um, it's only those really strange movements or the small movements that would um, cause me a lot of pain and one other thing that I found extremely interesting, which is always a good idea to get checked up, um, I could lift heavy objects, but I couldn't do light things. So if I was to have the need of picking up something heavy, I had no problem doing that. However, if you gave me one kilo and told me to rip do this maybe five times, I can't do it. My, my muscles were just so weak and they'd give way. So there you have it guys, that is the update of day one with my shoulder surgery. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions or concerns or anything you'd like to see, put it in the comment section below and I'll be happy to show you guys out, especially because I've got a lot of time on my hands right now. Um, and also guys, I'll be looking at measuring up my arm to see how much muscle wastage I'm going to have over the next six weeks. So that'll be extremely interesting. So as always guys, like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching Training with Bill.